Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Carol Manning and in this video I'm painting this little stoat in watercolours. So I've got my picture drawn out and I'm going to start with the rocky area, stony area underneath the stoat and for this I'm using Hordem Schmincke colour and I'm using Shire Grey. So I'm going to put that in first before I start doing the stoat. I did recently swatch some of the Horrid Armstrong set and this was one of them and I did say in that that this is sort of ideal for doing this sort of stony effect and it's getting very much the colours I wanted in this. So I'm going to use in a, this fairly wet, putting more colour in it and then I'm going to drop some spots in it as well while it's still wet. And just let it, let it do its own thing because it sort of naturally lends itself to this sort of rocky stony grave stone effect So I'm keeping the brush fairly wet, using a fairly big brush, round brush for this and keeping the paper fairly wet, doing wet on wet for this. As you see I can just drop in, in some blobs of the paint to get some of that spotting effect on the rocks and just letting it do its own thing. The rest of the paints I'm going to be using for this are mostly um, Windsor and Newton Cotman colours, though there is one other I'll use in which I'll talk about later on. Now I had to check it, check it for sure, but um, it is definitely a stoat rather than a weasel. I had to check which one was which. The stoats have black in their tail, which you can see in the reference photo, and are a slightly different brown from the, the weasels, which is slightly more gingery brown. So I've got my colours there, and as you can see, I've got the Horodam Schmincke grey there, indigo, Payne's grey, sepia, burnt umber, Van Dyke brown, lamp brown and the one I missed off of that which was also a Winsor Newton one was actually purple and to get the right shade of brown for this I've mixed some purple in with each of the browns. So I'm starting by putting a wash over the stoat and all the brown areas. Just giving it a light wash just to under coat to start with. Like most of my animals this is a layering process. So just working my way around it all. going in the general direction of the fur but I'm not worrying too much at this stage but what I am doing as you can see there is I'm beginning to put in a slight bit of the fur edge because I don't want to 
You don't want to get a straight edge on the fur because it'll show underneath, even with the layering. So again, same with this, I'm putting in the sort of fur effect into the strands coming out into the white. White areas of the stoat. Stoats and weasels look quite cute, but they are very vicious. I came across a weasel. I know it was a weasel because it's more gingery. Um, one of my gardens one time and it was having a to do with a rat that was was twice as big as it and the rat was definitely coming off the worst but apparently a stoat will often attack something like a rabbit that's twice its size No, it kills it by biting its throat. So they are quite vicious predators. But still quite sweet looking. I'm just putting in some indigo blue. This has gone a bit too dark to start with. I thought I had more watery than I intended. So I'm just lifting it off and I'll come back to that later when it's dried. So just and again a little bit of a wash over its nose as well. So where, where I've got the black area, uh, the white areas, I'm just putting a light wash or some strands of indigo blue. But I did, if you notice, rub out, or I am rubbing out some of the pencil lines as much as I can so that they don't show through on this white area. Sort of darker area under the chin. Just lighten up a little bit. I went a bit darker than I meant it to. Okay, just rubbing out some of those lines. I'm not rubbing them all out because otherwise I'll lose track of where they are. So just as and when I get to them, I'm just taking them out. So I'll then be able to see my paint line on it. So I'm using a miniature brush at this stage. So for the wash, I was using a bigger brush, but now it's onto the details. I sort swap to a miniature brush sort of lines, shadow lines that between the hairs that go through the white area quite strongly on the in parts on the feet and the underbody. There's a little bit of a foot there, his back leg is sort of taking a step back there. How well you can see that. So if you get bits where you not quite don't quite want them, just use a bit of clean water and lift them off. So now put the blue into the tail.
now beginning to use a little bit more of a detailed paint. For the first um, wash I was actually using burnt umber but as I said I added some purple into it as well to get that slightly cooler brown. decided at this point just to add a little bit more when I looked a bit more carefully at where the rock was I decided it needed a bit more underneath so just putting that bit in at this stage I thought I had some spots spare, but in fact it was a couple of bits of, I don't know, fluff or something. So I'm zooming in a little bit now while I'm working on the face. So I'm just using, it's already got some light sepia up on there, so I'm just using lamp black. They are very black eyes. see the other eye I'm putting in the whiskers at this point as well sometimes I add the whiskers later but on this one I decided to add them at this stage because most of them are coming out from the body and as I haven't got a background on this one as yet anyway I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to add one later on but yet yeah, there's not a background so it doesn't affect that it's outlining the nose a bit I'm now using a bit of Payne's grey to put some of the fur lines into the whites areas so mostly I've used a mixture of indigo and Payne's grey for the white dropping in a little bit, tiny bit of rose matter into the diluted rose matter onto the nose just to give it a very slight pinky hue. It's the only place I've put any any of that. So I didn't really put it on my paint list because I hardly used it. So I'm now on to using some sepia with some of the ducks in purple mixed in with it. It's slightly diluted at this stage and this is the first fur f lines of fur going into the dark area obviously you've got the wash underneath the background color so this is the next layer and it is just a case of working your way around varying the directions of the fur lines and the lengths looking at the reference photo to see where the lines are going remember if you get something wrong you can always lift it off with a bit of water and 
kitchen roll. The fur line does go a bit round the mouth, round the nose. The inside of the ears are actually quite dark, so I am using quite concentrated part of the paint for that. And then just continuing working around the body. This takes quite a long time and I do need to pay attention to the fur lines. So sometimes I get the more paint on the brush than I intend and that's when you get those dark marks. On the whole I try and keep quite a light touch on brush. So when I get to the white bits I'm bringing the lines into the white fur. As you can see I'm not keeping them all in the same direction, I'm overlapping them and I'm varying the lengths. So I haven't decided as yet whether I'm going to do another animal for next week or whether it's going to be something botanical. Not totally sure yet. Yeah. Got a whole selection of pictures put aside of things I want to paint, so it'll be a case of what I fancy painting at the time, really. But I say we'll try and vary it. Animals really are my first love when it comes to painting. So probably animals and birds and plants and flowers come up painting those came about more incidentally from the fact that I was doing animals and birds and wanted to add background to them so I started doing plants and flowers as a result. If you want the reference photo for these, it can be found at the end of the video if you wish to pause and screenshot. Alternatively, I do put PDFs of these on the little Facebook group I've got, so you'd be welcome to join that. And so I put the PDFs of all the videos for these up on that. Looking carefully at this hind leg where the leg joint is to make sure I get the direction of the fur correct on this. Because there's always a slight of a bit of a turnaround when you do get to the legs because it does vary then in direction. This is obviously speeded up, so if you're doing this yourself, be prepared to give it a good amount of time. I think this, before I speeded it up, was about two hours long, at least.
So we're just putting the brow now into the tail, sort of first layer of lines. So I'm now adding some darker colour into where the ears are. That top part is quite dark and I'm using a mix of Van Dyke Brown, Lamp Black and the purple, dark stone purple to get a dark brown for that. And just starting adding the next layer of fur lines. Because I'm zoomed in, those, the lines look quite big, but they are actually very small, as you say, because that's a very tiny brush tip. So just carry on working your way round as before, varying the straight directions, length of the lines, crisscrossing them over to get a natural effect. So it's just a case of working the way around the whole body again. Some places probably do slightly more concentrated than others. So lighter areas obviously you don't want to do. It does go over that heavily. Again bringing the lines into the white fur. I'll come back and do more to the white fur later on. And the, if you look at the photo, the brown does come down into the white lines as well. So bring it down slightly in places. They do have very, um, Long fur on the paws. If you're enjoying this video, if you please press, press the like, it would be 
much appreciated as it helped my channel to grow. Also, if you'd like to see future pictures, perhaps consider subscribing. Always nice to have more people watching. So then again in a few months, so but hopefully keep going. That's the intention anyway. So don't take rush this, it does take time. So mine's speeded up quite a lot. We certainly don't rush this stage. So as I say, all I'm doing at this stage is just working my way around the whole body, um, putting in the that next layer of dark brown lines. So I'm now adding a another layer of the fur, slightly darker again, which is a mixture of the sepia Van Dyke Brown, the purple and tiny amount of lamp black. And again, I'm just going to work my way around the darker areas with this.
as you can see at this stage um, I had added some more indigo blue and Payne's grey into the white areas unfortunately my camera had cut out at that stage so um, hopefully you'll be able to just look and see how I've approached that it is just a case of adding lines into those areas so I'm now adding some really dark colours again that really dark brown and just putting some extra bits in where I think it needs to be darker slightly a little bit more black in with it this time So unfortunately I've got a very annoying camera that's got a set time of 30 minutes and I don't always realise when I'm going over that so sometimes I don't realise that it's stopped. Some of these things I'll probably replace when I can. It's a good camera for taking photos and it does film really well but it's got this annoying feature that you can't turn off. So the lower part of the coat and more the right hand side as the stoat has got slightly darker shades to it so presumably that would mean the light was coming from the behind it. Putting a bit more dark into the tail as well. Just putting some black into that now at the moment. So the, just taking that into some of the higher bits. Sometimes I put a wash over the top to add the tonal values. This time I'm just doing, putting, making the fur a bit more concentrated and darker in areas. So just carry on putting in those darker areas just to get more of the shape into the state. It's the tonal values that give it its shape. Probably my version of the stoat's a little bit longer hair than the actual photo, but with artistic license, that's fine. So I'm now adding on some fairly concentrated um, tube buff titanium um, that makes Van go. Um, 
just to put some of the highlights back in. I didn't want to use too much white. But just putting a few bits back in where it went a bit dark. So I'm not adding an awful lot in. Just going to put a little bit more play with the nose. Try and get it more like I wanted it to look. So all I'm doing now is using white jelly pen just to take some of the white back into the dark areas just to blend it in a bit more not massively now just coming up you'll see that after I finished filming I did decide that the darkness between the eyes was a bit too deep so I've just lifted that slightly so couple that's the end then thank you very much for watching the references and outline are just coming up. You're welcome to screenshot and hopefully see you here again.